we are going to look at the roles of osmosis in living organisms. Just as a reminder, osmosis refers to the process whereby water molecules move from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration across the semipermeable membrane. Please remember that word, across the semipermeable membrane, as long as you are defining this physiological process. Since this process is concerned with movement of, of water, how do you think it is important in the body of an organism? Definitely all organisms require water in their body tissues because it is one of the components which an organism cannot do without. Let's check on the roles of this process called osmosis. Role number one, absorption of water from the soil by plant roots. Plants always acquire every material from where they are growing. When they need water, the, the roots will just absorb from the soil and that is through the process of osmosis. So that is the first role of osmosis. The second role is feeding in insectivorous plants. In insectivorous plants such as Venus flytrap, they have some cells which are sensitive to touch. So when an insect lands onto the leaf of a Venus flytrap plant, then the process of osmosis takes place whereby water will move out of the cells found in the leaf, hence making the leaf to fold inwards. In the process of folding, Venus flytrap is going to hold on to that insect, squeeze it, then absorb nutrients from the body of that organism and also absorb water in the process of osmosis from the body of that insect into the body of the plant. That is also very important. Number three, the process of osmoregulation in human beings. Osmoregulation, especially which takes place in the kidney tubules, regulates the amount of water that is within the body. For example, when, the, when an individual has been engaged in vigorous activities such as running, which has made the body lose a lot of water through sweating, then the body needs much water. The level of water in blood goes lower which means the concentration of blood increases and therefore it builds what we call osmotic pressure. This causes more water to be absorbed because if that is not regulated, then it is dangerous because it can lead to denaturation of cells which may end up crenating, hence may lead to death of an organism. So that is just an example of osmoregulatory role. And another osmoregulatory aspect is whereby somebody has drunk too much water and too much water is in blood, then this water needs to be eliminated. This process takes place in the kidney tubules whereby this water will be absorbed from the blood to the kidney tubules, in this case talking about kidney tubules such as the distal convoluted tubule and the proximal convoluted tubule when this water gets into these tubules then they will be eliminated out of the body in form of urine another role of osmosis is support in plants plants have cells which have cell wall when they absorb water the cells become turgid, hence it may attain an upright posture, like this one that I'm holding here. These leaves suggest that the plant has obtained enough water and it, the, uh, the cells are turgid, that's why it is having an upright posture. The plant that does not have enough water in its tissues may look like this one on my left hand. The amount of water in the cells is a bit lower, hence the cells are flaccid, making the plant not to have an upright posture, 
So it is lacking support at that moment, meaning this plant haven't absorbed enough water, while this one have enough water. You can see the difference. That is what we call support in plants, especially in young plants or seedlings, which haven't yet become woody enough. The last role of osmosis in living organisms is opening and closing of the stomata. I would like us to look at this diagram over here. For us to understand the concept of opening and closing of the stomata, it is very important for us to know the structure and position of the stomata on the body of a plant. Stomata is located on the surface of the leaf that is both upper and lower surface of the leaf in some plants while some contain stomata on the lower surface only. When a leaf is magnified using a magnifying lens or a hand lens you will be able to see a structure that looks like this. Here you will be able to see some small dotted structures which are white in color and those small dots represent the stomata. As you can see them here, that is a representation of the stomatal openings. When they are magnified using a light microscope, then you will be able to see them appearing like this. Here we can see some stomatal openings. You can see them here. In addition, we can also be able to see some cells which are close to them. Those cells that are in close contact with the guard cells are referred to as neighboring epidermal cells. Remember, stomata are small openings found on the leaf surfaces and they are located in between cells which are referred to as the guard cells. These cells are in contact with some cells of the epidermis. Hence, those cells that are in close contact with guard cells are referred to as neighboring epidermal cells. As you can see in this diagram over here, we are having five stomata and we can also see the neighboring epidermal cells here. Let us zoom into them and see how they look like. Here we have stomata A and B. Stomata A is open while B is closed. In stomata A, when you look at the guard cells, they are turgid and they have bulged outwards. This is an indication that they had absorbed more water through the process of osmosis Hence, they became turgid. In stomata B, it is closed because the guard cells are flaccid. When you look at these two guard cells, they are flaccid and they are in close contact with one another. Hence, the stomata has been closed. This is because they have not absorbed enough water. This is a clear explanation on how the process of osmosis facilitate opening and closing of the stomata. When the guard cells do not have enough water in them, they remain flaccid. But when they absorb more water from these neighboring epidermal cells, then the cells will become turgid, leading to opening of the stomata. So, in this case, the process of osmosis has led to opening and closing of the stomata. Thanks for watching the video. That is the end of lesson number 79. Please remember to subscribe to this channel.
more lessons are still coming your way. Bye!